ladies and gentlemen. Um, we just got done looking at special types of right triangles. Um, your 30, 60, 90, your 45, 45, 90, all through your 3, 4, 5. And what they allow you to do is they allow you to find uh, missing sides or missing angles in terms of a 3, 4, 5 um, if you're getting, given a certain characteristics of a triangle. Now, again, you can always find a missing side if you know two sides using the Pythagorean theorem. But what we're going to look at today is um, a little bit of trigonometry. You know, again, that puts the you know, the fear into some of you that you can't do this or you saw this in geometry and it's really difficult. To be honest with you, it's really not that bad, okay? And we'll go through this um, and then we'll do some examples. But there, in this particular section, there's going to be no application. That'll be the next section, section 3 of chapter 10, and that'll be the last, uh, the last topic we cover in this course. So you're about done, all right? So good job if you've been keeping up with me in this part. So this objective is, again, uh, objective number 69 is to find the values of trigonometric ratio. All right? Now, as we talked about, the word trigonometry just means study of triangles or triangle measurement. Uh, it dates back to the Greeks um, and so forth. And the thing is about trigonometry, we're going to look at it with respect to right triangle. Okay? And remember, a right triangle has as all angles do, or all triangles do, they have three angles and three sides, but a right triangle has a right angle and two acute angles that are less than 90 degrees. It has three sides, a hypotenuse and two legs. Now we can use trigonometry to find all of those sides and angles of a right triangle if we know either of the following conditions. If we know the length of one side and the measure of one of the acute angles, we can find all the remaining sides and angles. If we know the length of two sides, we can find all the remaining angles and that final side. So that's the nice thing about trigonometry is it allows you to be able to find missing measurements by knowing only a few things about a triangle. Okay? Now, we are studying, again, trigonometry, you don't have to have a right angle, but for our purposes to start with, we're looking at right triangles or triangles that just have one right angle. Okay? And just as a refresher, remember that in a triangle, the hypotenuse is the longest side of the triangle. It's always opposite the right angle. It never touches it. Okay? The other two sides are called the legs. And unless it's isosceles, there's a long leg and a short leg. Okay? The long leg is always opposite the larger of the two acute angles. So angle A here is larger than angle C. If that's the case, then, then <coughs> this vertical leg here CD or BC is going to be longer than AB. Okay? I mean, the same thing here. This would be if angle C is the smallest angle, then angle, or excuse me, side AB will be the shortest side. Okay, in a triangle. All right? Now, you can also remember that we can use the Pythagorean theorem if, if we know two of the three sides of the right triangle. So at any time, if you're ever given or you find two of the three sides, you can always use the Pythagorean theorem if you like to find that missing side. Now, here's the thing that people get most confused about, is that what trig ratios are, or trig and the functions, they're just ratios of two sides of the triangle. That's all they are. And it's easy to remember what they are by the word Sokotoa. Okay? So, if we designate one of the two acute angles, okay, in a triangle, for instance, right here, we have this Greek symbol here we call theta. So basically, we're designating, now again, here's your right angle right here. We are not going to designate the right angle, but we're talking about one of the two acute angles. This angle right here, that's going to be what we call our reference angle. Okay? Could it have been this one up here? Sure. But in this case, for this triangle, this is your reference angle right here, this green angle that's denoted by theta. Now, what you want to do is, once you know what that angle is, you want to label the three sides. Okay, in other words, the hypotenuse again in red here is opposite the right angle. It'll always be, no matter what other, which one's your reference angle, it's always opposite the right angle. The two remaining legs are designated at opposite and adjacent, depending on where they are with respect to this angle. The opposite angle does not touch this reference angle, so it is directly opposite that angle in blue here. The remaining side that does touch this angle, that is not the hypotenuse, is called the adjacent leg. 
Now, how would this change, ladies and gentlemen, if if this were our reference angle here? Well, then this side would become the opposite side, and then because it's opposite. And then this side right here that touches it would become the adjacent. And I'm abbreviating here. The hypotenuse will always stay the same. It's the longest side of the triangle off the right angle. Okay. Now, here's where the trig functions come in. Okay. And I don't like how they abbreviate these right here. But the SOH, okay, in SOHCAHTOA stands for sine. Okay. So I'm going to write this right here. SOHCAHTOA. The so, SOH. What that means is, and by the way, this, this is an abbreviation for sine. Sine is SI, and you don't call it sin, it's called sine. So sine of the and reference angle theta is equal to the ratio of the opposite side over the hypotenuse. So for this reference angle, it's the ratio of the opposite side over the hypotenuse. All right? For cosine. And that's what this is right here. This is cosine. Right here. Don't call it cos. It's called cosine. It's the ratio of the adjacent side to the hypotenuse. So for our reference angle here, it's just the ratio of the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. And finally, then, tangent, and again, it's not tan, it's tangent. Even if it's abbreviated, you still call it tangent. That's equal to the opposite side, the ratio of the opposite side to the adjacent side. So we take the ratio of the opposite side to the adjacent side, okay, for that particular angle theta. Now, again, your three trig functions, I'm going to write them out here, you don't, don't call them by their abbreviation, are sine, cosine, and tangent. They are abbreviated S-I-N, C-O-S, and T-A-N, but you don't call them sin, cos, and tan. A lot of people do that. These are your, and there's actually three other trig functions that we'll talk about if we would be talking about it, if this wasn't the abbreviated course. Now, here's the great thing about this. For instance, sign. Whatever this angle is, if it stays constant, let's say if it's, let's just say that angle is 20 degrees, or, or let's say you get 20 degrees. If theta equals 20 degrees, then it doesn't matter what size. The, the sides are because as long as this angle theta stays stays the same, then ladies and gentlemen, the ratio of the opposite side here to the hypotenuse is always going to be the same. That sine ratio is always the same. Even if I make my triangle smaller, like this, the ratio of the opposite side to the adjacent, or excuse me, the hypotenuse is always going to be the same for if, as long as this angle right here stays the same. So if I take here, if I take blue divided by red, it will give me the same ratio as blue divided by red. Okay, whatever that ratio is. All right. So and then. Same for the other trick ones of cosine and tan. So what I want to do is in the next video, let's go ahead and look at some examples and how you can use these trig ratios. Okay?